back to John Wick Hex. Uh, just before it released, you released a preview video called Quite an Imposition, uh, <laughs> in which you mention in the text for that video that working with Mike Bithell, he was on your composer bucket list due to his work on Thomas Was Alone. Who else is on your composer bucket list and why? Well, you mean, I presume you mean my, my developer bucket list. Uh, um, yeah. Because uh, uh, the, uh, the composer bucket list would be an interesting, different mm. uh, idea. I don't, I don't have... I don't, I, don't, I don't have grand aspirations of composers I'd love to work with. There's composers I'd love to have a, have a coffee with. <laughs> uh, but, um, uh, but, yeah, so I, I, um, I've had the great fortune of working with uh, quite a few of those folks already. Kim Swift was probably the first time she was the, one of the creators of Portal. And I, I remember uh, I, I always thought I would love to work with her. And then one day she called me and we did a game together and I was just over the moon. Um, and um, um, so it's, it's um, of those I've not worked with that would be a dream to work with. Um, funny enough, even though he's a very dear friend and we have made game-esque stuff together. Uh, Rami Ismail is a is a great friend and someone I've never. He's done a lot of these wonderful, quirky, bizarre uh, indies with his Dutch uh, company Vlambeer, like Ridiculous Fishing and Nuclear Throne. And uh, I I I I someday uh, hope that we can find opportunity to work together because I just love his. Um, um, I, 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 well, I just like him. I, I just adore him as a human. Really, honestly, is what it comes down to. Another developer who. Um, I would jump at the chance to work with if ever it, it came up is um, Steve Gaynor and, and his group Fulbright um, because their their kind of debut title Gone Home was was maybe my game of the year the year it came out I just absolutely loved that game but then their their underappreciated game that followed it which didn't get anywhere near as much sort of attention which I thought was amazing was called Tacoma and I remember after I played that I. You know, Steve and I know each other, and and I remember I messaged him on Twitter after I finished Tacoma, and it was like a year and a half after the game had come out that I just kind of randomly was like, I'm going to play this today. And I, I played through it, and I just blitzed through the whole game in one sitting and messaged him and said, this is a masterful game. I, I don't know if it – I don't know how it performed commercially and if you're satisfied with it creatively and e economically and any of that. I have no clue, but – as one random guy sitting at a computer in Los Angeles, I can tell you this was a hell of an experience that really made me think and really um, uh, uh, mo moved me. And, and, um, and I just want you to know I'm a fan. And, uh, and we had you know, a great conversation. And, um, and uh, so you know, if ever someday he were to come along, you know, I, to me, I, can never, I can't shake when someone makes such an impression on me through their work. It's just like, oh, my God, I would love to be part of that uh uh if ever they if ever if ever it makes sense you know if ever it's one of those where where uh it's the kind of project we both feel is the right match for our collaborative energies um but yeah lucas pope is another one who i don't particularly know him but i you know i remember when papers please came out i just thought this is just such a and it's not a particularly musically driven game i just loved his his aesthetic as a designer um but uh, but yeah, it's it's um, it's funny enough. There's one on the list that I would love to say, but I I think it's recent recent rumblings uh, ha have me thinking it's better to honor some NDAs uh, yeah. because I actually think that we are going to work together, um, and I, I would rather just leave it. But th but there was a, there was one example of, of of somebody that I absolutely admired like crazy and then just a very odd series of circumstances led to a conversation that i thought i think we're actually going to do this thing and uh i didn't see that coming um but uh but yeah otherwise the funny enough i i feel lucky that, that most of the people that i i kind of always dreamed like tim schaefer as an example i actually have worked with and so it's like i i feel very lucky yeah it definitely sounds like it and it's very exciting for you that Hopefully in the coming years, maybe a few more of those come to light as well, which would be very exciting for you well, and I'm yeah. sure everyone else. Well, and particularly, you know, those developers that I, I don't even know who they are yet because they haven't, mm. they haven't released that game that 
I then play and realize, oh my God, this person's a genius. You know, like that's always mm-hmm. what's exciting, you know, and I never, I, I never heard of Mike Bithell until Thomas Was Alone came out. So it's like, if you had asked me this question one day before that, I would have yep. never mentioned him, but then in, two days later he would have been you know the top of the list so that's always exciting is that the game industry is reliably s- generating new exciting people um every day seemingly uh, that um uh you know so, so another another good example of somebody who i that um i would happily jump at the chance to work with although i also am perfectly happy to just keep playing his games um is Sam Barlow. I I loved her story and I loved uh telling lies. And he and I are are friends and I I I have no idea if we'll ever work together or not and I'm happy to be his friend and I'm happy to just be his fan also. But I I certainly would be thrilled at the chance to work together if ever it, if that made sense mutually as well, you know, that that kind of thing cuz he's also just a fascinating guy and and he did something with her story I genuinely had never experienced before and I was like this is just brilliant. Yeah, very exciting. Very exciting. Uh, what do you wish more people asked you about composing for video games? <laughs> I don't know. That's an interesting. That's that is its own interesting question. I I I um. It's not. I, here's the first thing that came to mind, and I. It, but the thing is, it's not really targeted at me. I do wish more people were perhaps more curious about what it takes to make a game in general yes because i've always felt and and this goes for all art this would be like i wish people were a little bit more curious and i say that it creates the suggestion that when i say i wish xyz that we're in some dire situation where you know game developers and publishers are just going woefully unappreciated that's not true at all um but it's like if asked and, you know, if public appreciation is at, you know, 50 percent, I'm not saying it's at one percent, but if it's at 50 percent, it would be amazing if it was 75 percent or whatever, yeah. making up random, meaningless numbers. But uh, but uh, with the idea that, you know, when I see people say, oh, my God, that game sucked, you know, the cameras were annoying. And I'm like, so so depending on the kind of game we're talking about. A dozen or a hundred or five hundred people's work just got swept away downstream because this one esoterically specific part of the game was unsatisfying to you. Now, look, I get it. I've been a gamer my whole life, and sometimes if there is a if there is a you know a weak link in the chain and it really distracts you from all the rest of the game, it can be hard to appreciate how hard everybody else worked on that team. Um, but that's one of those where I thought, you know, the the more I've because I've, I've I've never stopped playing games as in tandem or in parallel to my career participating in the creation of games, and so my appreciation for what it takes to make them, as you could, you could guess, is exponentially increased. It's just like because I see it firsthand. I go like just yesterday I was at Giant Squid, you know, the creators of of Abzu and in this upcoming game we're working on, The Pathless. Like I was down in their office and I had a chance to look over everybody's shoulder and see you know what's the technical artist doing what's the animator doing what's matt doing in the door and the kind of dual role of creative director and art and art director and uh-huh. and what's you know the programmer and doing and it's like you see how hard everyone's working and all this stuff and there's so much that goes into it that people will never even see because the only way you would see it is if it was broken um and so it's like if 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 people could ask questions that belied a general deeper curiosity to just how it's done I yes. think people would probably enjoy games more because mm. they would realize, okay, yes, you know, maybe I don't love the, the, you know, the, the, the way this aspect of the mechanics are handled, or I don't love the, or the, you know, the graphics are buggy and I constantly like notice issues in the rendering of blah, blah, X, Y, Z, whatever. They would not fail to realize that it's still pound for pound and a pretty amazing achievement. And that it's a and it, it's a great it's a great piece of work, um, and um, so yeah that that would be my own because yeah for me people don't need to ask me anything <laughs> I, that, I'm I'm perfectly content to put music out there and if people like it I'm thrilled and if they don't I'm 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 accepting of that as well and I'm I, I'm often very curious why they, they don't like it and. If it's just taste, or if it's just some error on my part, and um, but it, but in the end, it, it, I'll still do what I'm 
doing and they'll still do what they're doing and the world will proceed onward uh completely neutrally to all of us so i <laughs> i uh yeah i i'm i'm i uh, i i would only wish that people um get as excited about all the different cogs and wheels and gears that it takes uh, as, as i get because i think it's really inspiring i completely agree and 100 percent, there is an appreciation there that does lie under the surface a little bit more that it is a shame isn't more recognized but hopefully moving forward that will change a little bit well and credit to, my- to you and i think to the the current wave of games journalism in general does seem to be aimed at unearthing more of that nuance and i see more and more reviewers who are disinterested in you know giving games a one through ten score and things like that because people recognize that it's really hard to boil down something that much especially something as complicated it's hard enough with movies and games have the potential to be exponentially more complicated i mean how do you give death stranding yes a one through ten unless you create this outrageously complex matrix of subcategories that then just yield a a kind of aggregate number that you just sort of say, well, you know, the data says I landed at 7.9 because here's my 40 point analysis. You know, if you, if you really go hard enough into that, okay, maybe I'm not, I'm not, I'm certainly not one to shy away from data sciences, but I also think, you know, a game like that, there's a lot to consider and there's a lot to contend with. Like I had a lengthy conversation about it where I said, I'm not convinced I like this game at all. And my friend said, well, you have to go into it knowing that there's going to be just mountains of unskippable cutscenes, and, mm. uh, and that the UI is almost certainly going to be terrible and confusing. And, <laughs> uh, and if you can go into it with low expectations there, you probably will realize it's actually a masterpiece of a game. And um, and I said, you know, I honestly think that you're nailing it. I think that my disconnect with Death Stranding was entirely on the basis that I I I was letting those two things in particular really trip me up. I thought, you know, if I wanted to watch a movie, I would be on Netflix, Hulu, yeah. Disney Plus, and 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 it's playing the game for two hours in which 90 minutes are cutscenes is just to me not the kind of game I'm into. But if I had sort of just relinquished if I just sort of acknowledged that that was going to happen and gone into it, you know, fully anticipating that I I'm sure I would have had a very different first five or six hours with the game before I could yeah. start to see its charms. And, you know, so it's like already there where, you know, even just in three sentences, I'm, I'm, and I'm not a proper journalist in the way you are a games reviewer and games sort of analyst. Uh, I'm just speaking purely as a player and, and, um, and so anyway, long, long story short, I, I do appreciate and, and like I said, credit, credit to you and your um, your ilk, your 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 uh, your uh, colleagues, as it were. I, I see more and more of it on on uh, across the spectrum from YouTubers and, and bloggers to uh, big, you know, IGN and Polygon type sites to everybody to every everybody else. This seems to be a general trend towards trying to be more critical, trying to be more yeah. sort of scholastic in a way. And I and I very I'm very appreciative of that. I'm very grateful because I see how hard so many people work, and it's just such a shame to see a three sentence like, "Here are the pros, here are the cons." I give it a seven uh, and a thumbs up. Would buy or would recommend. It's like you know. Look, I get that there's an audience for that, but um, it's nice to try to elevate the conversation or to deepen yeah. the conversation. You shared your Spotify wrapped on your Twitter recently. <laughs> wow, you're you're really on the you're on the cutting edge. I feel like <laughs> I feel like I shared that after when we would have otherwise had a chance to chat. So this is like updating our. I, I could be wrong about that, but anyway, don't let me interrupt you. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, that's all right. You shared your Spotify wrapped. Uh, and you do have quite an incredible following of your work. And, and you said before, you're happy if no one talks to you about it and if people like and enjoy, that's a wonderful thing. But having seen metrics like that and looking at the hard numbers of those people, how does that feel, having that kind of following? And what does it mean to you? Um, you know, it's one of those that I find that I, I'm, I'm, it's fascinating. And in particular, because of what it teaches me about the distribution tools and just the ways to reach people and mm-hmm. what people like in terms of, you know, Spotify versus um, um, 
vinyls versus uh, high resolution lossless audio on Bandcamp or whatever. Like I, I'm fascinated by the ways in which people consume music, yes. and I like to try to make sure to uh, lean into where the where people's you know where the trends are in terms of people's listening, just to make sure that that if anyone goes looking in their desired place that they're hopefully have something to find. And so I, to me, there's a, there's a certain kind of an analytical side of it that I find just fascinating more than anything. Um, but then the other thing is I try to not think about it particularly, especially if I'm literally like writing music in the moment and I'm doing my work, I don't sit there and think, I wonder how this will, add or not to my Spotify ecosystem <laughs> or or whatnot because uh, I find that my main interest as a composer is my, is is my general interest as a person in is curiosity I I like to try new things that's why I'm grateful for projects like John Wick um, and there was another game that actually came out the same exact day called the Bradwell conspiracy where in both cases you know and even in the Erica prior to that but particularly in in John Wick and in Bradwell, I, I'm often encouraged to sort of be experimental, and I also do my own pet projects where I'm writing music for my own my own ends. Like I did last year, a a a, a crazy sort of science and and orchestra theater piece um, uh, that uh, I'm I'm not I'm just trying to do something that whether or not the world has never seen music like this, I I don't know, but I certainly know whether I've tried it before or not. And that's always kind of the main goal, you know. That's why, um, that's why I was touched when you made that comment about the nightclub music in John Wick, because that's more virginal soil for me than yep. like grand orchestral music. And so mm. uh, I'm always looking for ways to to avoid having a formula and vo avoid having a uh, a kind of a shtick in what I do. I'm I'm trying to kick over new rocks with every note I write. Never mind every cue or or piece yep. of music or score in general. And so the thing that I notice is that I can't predict what people will like or not. Uh, so, you know, some of the scores that I really pushed myself the hardest on um, went completely on un unseen. Like when I look at those Spotify numbers, for example, yeah. in more detail, it's like, oh, wow, no one listened to, to that score. And I probably worked twice as hard on that one as on <laughs> this one. And that's not to say it's better or worse, but it, it's one of those that it's like, I can't, there's no such thing as like, I'm going to write this and put it out and then just build it and they will come. Uh, yes. It seems to me quite random because I'm not, I'm not writing with that, any expectation one way or the other there. I'm just writing until it feels sort of internally like it needs to. And, and of course, if it's a game score or video or a film score or whatever, it, I'm making sure that it's satisfying those uh, needs and the and and my collaborators' wishes and all of that sort of stuff. And then when we're then what by the time we've reached the finish line, you know, if people like it, especially yeah. on Spotify where you've completely removed the content, like in the in the case of a soundtrack, you've removed the thing that it was written to do. You know, I've I, I wrote a video yeah. game score and then I got rid of the video game. Uh, and so Spotify already is kind of this artificial environment for what the music is supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And and that said, I do go to great lengths to re-edit the music and, and to, okay. in a, to a degree almost recompose it for purposes of the album so that it doesn't actually feel so horribly like a soundtrack that's just been yeah. Velcroed off of its... Of its uh, proper context and then just put out there and there's a lot of soundtracks i listen to where i i just think this is so uh horrendously boring and yet when i play the game i love it uh because it's just not it's just not well curated for an album um and uh and but it's a great score and so i'm always trying to avoid that as best as i can and, and then there have been some projects that especially on the film side of my career where I just never released an album because I was like, I, I honestly don't think that I could ever make this work no matter what I did to be a satisfying album. And, uh, and so I'm okay letting it just live and die by the, by the context it was written for. That's really interesting that you mentioned changing the context. Very, very interesting. But uh, I suppose in many ways it's similar to what you were saying with not having a favorite these songs mean something to people in terms of a different context that has resonated with them and it's the memory of it that lives with them beyond that which is why a, a medium like that can live on 
Yeah, absolutely. And 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 that that also is one of those things that my most popular music is always because that game is the most popular game. And like, you know, I think I think the single most popular piece of music I've ever written is the finale from Journey Apotheosis. And it's expressly because people have such strong emotional associations with the gameplay experience and the yeah. gameplay memories. There's almost no one that I'm aware of that that sort of found that music out in the wild and just fell in love with it as a piece of music. I, I mean, I've gotten a few messages over the years and, and I don't take that as some kind of discrediting of myself or anything. I'm grateful that I had the chance to write music to, to, to supplement or to participate in the gameplay experience of something as magical and sort of perfect as journey is as a game. Um, and so it's like, I, 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 I don't, I feel nothing but gratitude that that people love the game and then I get to kind of ride the coattails of that. <laughs> and so that the album on that particular track, especially um, gets so much. I mean, it's been it's we're coming up on eight years that it's been away. It's been out and I get I still get daily messages from people wow. um, uh, about that piece in particular. Um, and um, and. I know it's because they love the game and and they they it's just a subcomponent of the game. And if there was an art equivalent to a soundtrack album and, yeah. or if there was like an animation equivalent, like a thing they could enjoy sort of separately from the thing, those would all be popular, too. Yes. It's so it's like I'm not special. Um, I'm not doing something that no one else on the team that no one else on that game company or at Sony also did i'm i'm just lucky that music is this oddball anomalous thing that can be taken out of the game and sort of enjoyed independently of it um but also evoke the memories that you got while playing sure. and therefore kind of become this way to relive the game without having to have the game in front of you um and um and I, I know I'm I'm kind of over as, as rambling as I'm being I, I know I'm oversimplifying it because people also do make new memories I mean one of the most touching things ever is when I get a note periodically from someone who says something like, I, I, I played, uh, you know, a piece of yours at my father's funeral mm -hmm. or at my wedding. I came down the aisle at my wedding to this piece yeah. or something. And again, most of the time they're, they had the prior experience with the game and then that's what turbocharged it. But now the music has a new meaning, yeah. uh, that they've created. And that's to me, that's the height of it. Like my favorite thing ever is when I see, when I look through the transcript of, of transactions on Bandcamp and it can tell me the difference between this person bought the album versus this person gifted the album. And when I see yeah. when somebody is using this work as a way to bring happiness to someone else, that means that they see it as something that could cause someone else happiness. And that I often will literally like look up in the PayPal transcripts their email address and send them a note to be like, I saw that you gifted this album and I just want you to know that it made my day to see that. And I just can't wow. like, thank you. No, Cause that to me, that's a whole other sort of thing that I, I could never have predicted. And, and, uh, and I never would take that for granted. It's, it's an amazing thing. And I, I keep every day is one of those, like, I'm sure this is going to be the last time that ever happens. <laughs> uh, uh, because, um, you know, we always expect the, the train to grind yes. to a halt one of these days. And it will, I, I know it will. It's just, Hope maybe maybe it's tomorrow. Hopefully not today. Hey.